Look what I found in Buffalo. Starscream's head, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers theory. Today's is going to cover why Starscream's head was in perfect condition. So without further ado, let's jump right in. As we remember from Transformers Dark of the Moon, Starscream was killed by Sam Witwicky after he stabbed a boomstick into his eye, causing his head to blow up. But later when Transformers of the Last Night rolls around, Daytrader presents Starscream's head to Kadan friends, with it now somehow being in perfect condition despite it being blown up two films earlier. Furthermore, both of his eyes were pulled out of their respective sockets, but now they are perfectly fixed. However, the real kicker is that Daytrader was able to manipulate Starscream's mouth like a puppet meaning that all of the internal parts were somehow restored. And though we will never get an official explanation due to the Bayverse being rebooted, I can formulate a pretty solid theory on how Starscream's head was fixed. And for those of you who are wondering if I already did this theory, I did, but that video is horrendously ridden with mistakes and the answer I came to wasn't very conclusive. So with that said, let's figure out who fixed his head. And to answer this, we have to understand what happened after he died. As we know, many lives were lost due to the destruction of Chicago. This caused public opinion on the Autobots to hit rock bottom. Despite them saving the city, a swift act of Congress terminated all human Autobot joint programs, which ultimately got Ness shut down. But to still combat the remaining Decepticon forces, longtime CIA agent Harold Attinger founded Cemetery Wind, an elite Black Ops CIA unit that was intended to flush out the handful of Decepticons left on Earth. The government, still worried about possible future Transformers attacks, gave Kinetic Solutions Incorporated a special government contract to collect the remains of the dead Transformers and reverse engineer their technology to be turned into weapons for the United States. This would lead KSI to conduct a huge cleanup effort, allowing them to snatch up all the Transformers scraps so they could study them. And since Starscream was killed in Chicago, it's safe to say that he was among the bodies taken to KSI. This debunks my previous theory where I said a human or day trader fixed the head. And since it would be more likely that KSI would get to Starscream's body before any scavengers, this would mean that they would be the ones behind the restoration of his head. And I'll explain why this is the case. You see, KSI would become interested in manufacturing their own Transformers, which they would call prototypes. To achieve this, they would sever the heads of the dead Transformers in order to download their minds. The information inside would allow KSI to fully understand Transformium, the metal that all Transformers were made up of. And they would harvest this rare metal by melting down the bodies of the fallen Cybertronians. This can explain why Starscream's head was severed, since KSI wanted to archive the information in his mind to their ever-expanding database. Now you could say that after the archiving process, his head would have been melted down, since this is what happened to Ratchet after he was killed by lockdown, rendering my theory of KSI fixing the head invalid. But this comparison is unfair to make since during the events of Age of Extinction, which takes place around mid-2018, KSI has already figured out how to make their own Transformers. However, since they were running scarcely low on Transformium, they were forced to start melting down any excess corpses they had. And you're working with Transformium? Uh, I, I, yeah, that's what I do. I, I am. I'm out there digging for it. There's just not much left to find. So that's how badly you boys need more, huh? reduced to melting even old Decepticons down. But during the time Starscream's body was likely taken in, which would be around late 2013 to early 2014, since the events of Dark of the Moon wrap up around September 2013, it's safe to say that KSI had an abundance of Transformium due to all the carcasses littered around Chicago. And at this time, it's safe to say that KSI did not know how to make their own Transformers yet, since they just started collecting bodies. So logically, this would lead them to dissect and restore some of the bodies to fully understand how Transformers worked. And I believe Starscream's head was one of many restorations. And the smoking gun that can prove that restorations did happen would be two heads. You see, two heads is clearly something KSI would never manufacture. If you compare him to everyone else, he's clearly the black sheep of the family. And I think we can contribute that to him being an experiment by KSI to understand if they could repair and modify damaged Transformium. If you think about it, many Decepticons were brutally murdered during the Battle of Chicago, but Shockwave's body stayed relatively intact. 
And if you look at the two heads design, all the parts that were destroyed on Shockwave were rebuilt. With the parts that were not damaged, being his arms and legs, being carried over to their two heads design. And with them knowing how to rebuild the body, they would then see if they could make their own modifications to it. For example, two heads having, well, two heads. And him now having two blades instead of one. Interestingly enough, there is a concept art depicting him having an alternate weapon configuration where he has two guns on top of the blades, and one where he has a tail. And if you want to learn more about the KSI drones, check out the history of KSI right here. So with that evidence at hand, it's safe to say that restorations did happen. And I think we can firmly say that KSI were the ones behind the restoration of Starscream's head. But now, the question is, why his? Well, first and foremost, the likely reason on why they chose to restore his head is because he is one of the top-ranking Decepticons. And it's a common trend for KSI to keep the heads of the big players, proven by Sentinel and Megatron's head still being in use, along with Shockwave's head getting a makeover. Another reason why I believe they chose his head is because it's very complex and unique serving as the perfect experiment to see if they could restore back to its former glory. Lastly, before I move on to how Daytrader got it, you may be wondering why it wasn't melted down when KSI was low on Transformium. And well, that's because the restoration of Starscream's head was an achievement, a milestone even to understand how Transformium worked which would lead KSI to eventually crack the code on creating Transformers. And I think it would be safe to say that Screamer's head was likely displayed somewhere, similar to how Stinger was in the showroom. So now knowing how Starscream's head was restored, let's figure out how it ended up in Daytrader's possession. A key thing Daytrader tells us is where he exactly found the head. Look what I found in Buffalo. Starscream's head, ladies and gentlemen. Now though he's not specific on which Buffalo it was, I think it would be safe to say that he found it in Buffalo, New York. On top of that, we know that KSI is headquartered in Chicago, which is around eight and a half hours from Buffalo. So now the question is how did the head get there? Well, as we know, the KSI drones caused havoc in Hong Kong, with many innocent people being caught in the crossfire. Because of this, I think it would be reasonable to say that after KSI was exposed to be the reason behind all the death and destruction done to Hong Kong, it's entirely possible that they were looted in protest, with some Cybertronian technology being stolen. I can back this up since in Transformers The Last Night, Sir Edmund Burden has the KSI Transformium balls on his desk, something that nobody besides KSI should have, along with the fuel cell from Dark of the Moon, which as we know after the events of Dark of the Moon, all assets from Sector 7 and Nest were given over to KSI to study. This is why we see Megatron's body schematics on a monitor, and why we can see a replica of Bumblebee's lower torso, which they could only build with Bumblebee's schematics, which logically would only be available in the possession of Ness before their closure. So with that evidence at hand, I think it is safe to say that a looting at KSI did happen, explaining how Edmund was able to get these items on his desk, and why Screamer's head ended up in Buffalo. As for how Daytrader got his hands on it, we know that Daytrader barters with people all the time to get the things that he wants. One such example being when he gave Jimmy an alien blaster in exchange to get into the junkyard. What did he give you to get past the gate? Nothing! Hey Kate, he gave him this. So with that said, he likely did the same thing to get Screamer's head, which finally explains how he got it in his possession. And as we know, he would later drop it off at the junkyard where Megatron would eventually find it and say his final goodbyes to his fallen second in command. And just like that, that was why Starscream's head was in perfect condition. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing. Thank you.